Greetings from Tokyo, my dear, dear friends. This is Daisuke, and I hope this video finds you well wherever you are in the world. About a couple months ago, I had the great pleasure to hold on this YouTube channel a viewer poll wherein I asked you, the viewers, to submit to me your choices for your favorite Criterion Collection cover art designs. I received so many entries and I'm very grateful to all who participated. Thank you very much for making this a very worthwhile project. Now the results are in and so today, if you don't mind, I would very much like to share with you the top 20. So this is the top 20 Criterion Collection cover art designs, the top 20 favorite cover art designs as chosen by you, the viewers. Now just to uh, go over what the rules were, so as you know, I asked uh, everyone to submit their top 10 favorite cover art designs and uh, they could be anything in the Criterion Collection. And I gathered all the votes, and I counted all the votes, and I created the list, which is right here. I have it printed out and ready to go. And over the course of this video and other subsequent videos, I will present the entire list. First will be the top 20. Now I should note that uh, this is a list that was uh, compiled by me and I was working on it by myself. So there is the possibility that I might have made some error in terms of the calculation. It was not my, uh, I did my very best and I tried to make sure that all errors were, uh, were uh, deleted um, and everything was uh, clear and free of error. But along the way, if you think that I might have made an a mistake. Maybe I had accidentally left out a vote that you had made. My sincerest apologies, but um, it wasn't um, done on purpose. It was purely accidental. But I tried my best to make sure that all the results that I uh, gathered were free of any such error. But if you think that I did any error, please let me know and I'd be very happy to acknowledge that. Um, also, I should point out that this list uh, was, of course, of titles in the Criterion Collection. As you know, there are some titles that have more than one release, maybe depending on the format, DVD or Blu-ray. Sometimes uh, a film that is released on different formats might have different cover art for, depending on the, the, the format being used. DVD cover art might be different than, say, the Blu-ray cover art. So unless uh, unless the viewer specified a specific format, I was always under the assumption that all titles were referring to the most recent format version of that title. So if there was a DVD and Blu-ray of a particular title and someone mentioned the title without necessarily specifying the format, then I would always assume the Blu-ray. And so uh, please note that it's based on that assumption that I made my calculations and formulated the ultimate list uh, here, the, the results that formed the final list, which is right here. Uh, so there's that assumption. Finally, uh, please note that this is, in general, a cover art design list. Uh, so it's uh, sometimes, you know, the, the whole package is, of course, uh, well worth looking at. And then the front cover, the back cover, and the, and the inside uh, portions, the inside cover designs, the booklet, all the illustrations and all that. And so I encourage you all to take a look at those uh, if you have the, the physical media copies themselves. Please 
please, I encourage you to take a look at those. Uh, for purposes of these videos, uh, and just to save on time, you know, it, it does take uh, uh, it does take some time on my part to open up every single title and show you every single illustration, etc. So, uh, for purposes of of a sort of economy. Uh, in terms of making this video, if you'll permit me, I will for the most part just be showing the front cover uh, and then um, with the understanding that uh, if you want to look at other parts of the artwork, the back cover inside, uh, you are free to do so uh, with your copies uh, or uh, online resources, etc. However, along the way, if I think it's necessary, then I will be referring to the inner part of a, of a particular package or the back part of a particular package or something like that. But in general, uh, I ask for your understanding through these videos in that I will generally be relying only on the front cover art and uh, just uh, under the assumption that if you want to pursue uh, further examination of any of the artwork in any part of any package from the Criterion Collection, you are of course free to do so. Uh, and uh, um, uh, I hope that uh, uh, you find what it is you are looking for. Okay, so with that sort of preliminary stuff out of the way, now let me present to you the top 20 favorite Criterion Collection cover art designs as chosen by you, the viewers. In 20th place, we have seven titles, each receiving seven votes. So seven titles, each receiving seven votes, tied for 20th place. The first title is Spine Number 591. It's this. 12 Angry Men. And this is credited as being art directors Sarah Habibi and Eric Skillman with illustrations by Sean Phillips. So this is a great design, very iconic, representative of the film and the characters that are featuring in this film, aptly called 12 Angry Men with an uh, aptly designed cover art, uh, which is uh, based on your selection, tied for 20th place. So here is 12 Angry Men. Next, spine number 593. This was also tied for 20th place, having received seven votes. The film is Belle de Jour. The art is credited as being art director and designer Sarah Habibi with illustrations by David Downton. And look at this. This is a kind of artistic representation of the uh, one of the very famous images from the film, except it's done in a quite uh, evocative uh, artistic expression with a very interesting font in red with the black background and the white, etc. Uh, very much in keeping with the iconic tone of this particular image, which is very representative of this uh, classic iconic film, Belle de Jour. Next, this also received seven votes, so this is tied for 20th place. Spy number 837, Decalogue. And this is credited as being, uh, let's see, art director Sarah Habibi, Eric Skillman, designer Anthony Gerace. Uh, but this is the uh, very uh, emblematic cover art, minimalist yet striking, uh, numbers are very important, and the way that the squares are composed uh, creates a kind of semblance of uh, iconography that is both simple and striking at the same time. And so this is the cover art for Decalogue. Next, also having received seven votes, this is tied for 20th place, spy number 137, the Blu-ray of Notorious. This is credited as being art directors Sarah Habibi, Eric Skillman, illustrator Greg Ruth. So this is a kind of uh, reproduction 
or it's based off of a particular moment in the film with two characters and one prop which is being held in the hand of one of the characters here. Very significant prop that becomes its own iconic image with uh, white and black and shadows used to great effect. This is the cover art for Notorious. Next, also having received seven votes, this is tied for 20th place, spine number 647. On the Waterfront. This is credited as being art director Sarah Habibi, Eric Skillman, illustrations Sean Phillips. And it is very gritty. It has a kind of black and white feel to it, although the tone is, of course, not necessarily black and white, but a sort of faded bluish gray, which adds to a sense of melancholy and yearning and also of a struggle and so much more, which is very emblematic of this film itself. So this is the cover art for On the Waterfront. Next, also having received seven votes, this is spine number 701. So this is also tied for 20th place. Film is Persona with art director and designer credited as being Sarah Habibi. This is taking a very uh, sort of a representative moment from this film and the way in which the characters interact both in terms of emotional interaction and also via the physical space and the use of white and black and close-ups and the face, the visage, the power of the visage. All this stuff is encapsulated quite succinctly and effectively in this image used for the cover art design for the film Persona. And last but not least, this was also a title that received seven votes, thus making it tied for 20th place. Spy number 663. This is Shoah. And we have a very uh, memorable image from the film itself with the very uh, simple yet effective use and positioning of the lettering for the title uh, and that information in the center of the, f of the image of the frame. And as you know, this is uh, meant to evoke a very powerful and uh, unsettling and disturbing, uh, yet so quiet and uh, eerie uh, part of the film that is suggestive of a true deep horror that is the subject of this film, of course. So this is art director Sarah Habibi and designer Sam Smith for this particular artwork for Shoah. Next, I will present the titles that each received eight votes, thus making them tied for 14th place. So the first of these films, which received eight votes and thus being tied for 14th place, is Spy Number 34. This is the Blu-ray of the release, Andre Rublov. And the Andre Rublov cover art is credited as being, let's see, art director Sarah Habibi, Eric Skillman, and designer Nesim Hickson. This is the uh, very representative take on the film, Andre Rublov, and we have the way in which iconography is being presented and it's on full display. The uh, sort of austerity and beauty of that kind of presentation, which is, in many respects, the essence and the heart of this work, Andre Rublov. Next, also having received eight votes, this is tied for 14th place. This is spy number 93. The film is Black Narcissus. 
This is the Blu-ray. And the art is credited as being art director Sarah Habibi and menu and package design F. Ron Miller. And as you can see, this is... Uh, it's a very clever usage of font and also color of the typeface, black and white. There's also the way in which a certain image from the film is used, a high angle, and also focusing in on the environment and the way in which uh, the human uh, character uh, seems almost to be uh, diminished by the high angle and the, the vastness of the environment. And this is a key component of this remarkable work. Uh, this is Black Narcissus. Next, this received eight votes, thus tied for 14th place. Spy number 260. This is Eyes Without a Face. This is credited as being art directors Sarah Habibi, Eric Skillman, and designer Aesthetic Apparatus. And you look at this cover art and one is immediately uh, in a trance almost looking at this. There is a kind of mystery, a chilling effect, almost a horrifying effect. And indeed, this is so highly suggestive of the kinds of chilling, horrifying things that are to be expected when watching this film, thus making this cover art very chilling, very eerie, very spooky, and oh so fitting for this film, Eyes Without a Face. Next, this also received eight votes, thus making it tied for 14th place. This is spy number 700. The film is Fantastic Mr. Fox, and the art is credited as being art director Sarah Habibi, cover painting by Turlo Griffin, designer F. Ron Miller. And if you know the story, Fantastic Mr. Fox, and you know the film, Fantastic Mr. Fox, then you will know this particular moment or story or event that is being depicted on the cover here. And it is a uh, it, it is very fitting, it's very apt, it is very accurate to the story, both the source material and the uh, Wes Anderson adaptation. And it is bright, it is lively, and it is uh, very much a mirror of the brightness and the liveliness that is the film Fantastic Mr. Fox. Next, this received eight votes thus making it tied for 14th place. Spy number 841. Lone Wolf and Cub. And this is artwork that is credited to art directors Sarah Habibi, Eric Skillman, illustrator Paul Pope with color by Ron Wimberly, baby cart diagram Solgood Sam, designer Steve Chow. So we have here, of course, the uh, unforgettable, violent, uh, tumultuous, and uh, emotionally moving and effective and very, uh, very exciting and adventurous world and universe that is the Lone Wolf and Cub universe. And it's all here in all of its splendor and glory with red flashed across, which is uh, very uh, suggestive of the violence of this world and also the turbulence and the chaotic nature of this world. It is brilliant work for a brilliant release from Criterion that is Lone Wolf and Cub. Last but not least, this is a title or box set that received eight votes thus making it tied for 14th place. Spy number 679. This is Zatoichi, the Blind Swordsman. And let's just take a look at the set here. This is the dual format release, so it's a little bit bigger, but the artwork should be the same. And you can see here that it is truly a behemoth set. 
I've taken out the booklet, and I'll get to that in a second. But what we have here, of course, is a one-of-a-kind set with artwork that just continues on throughout the entire uh, uh, wondrous thing that this is. So, uh, and it's uh, it shows adventure, action, color, uh, sort of violence, and of course, it has this world that is the character of Zatoichi. And so this is Zatoichi, the blind swordsman. And the uh, art is credited as being, uh, here we go, excuse me here. The art is credited as being uh, art directors, Sarah Habibi, Eric Skillman, illustrations, Ron Wimberly, designer, Eric Skillman, with additional illustrations for example, that are given for each title uh, of the fi of, uh, of that are included in this set, because as you know, the set has many films, and so there are different illustrators that give artwork for respective films, and so you can look, for example, through the booklet, and you can see the different. Uh, types of illustrations that are offered for the various films with the illustrator being credited as well on the, the opposite page. So if you're interested in that, you can take a look uh, through the booklet and enjoy all the illustrations. But for purposes of this ranking, the, uh, the set, the entire set of Zatoichi the Blind Swordsman received eight votes, thus making it tied for 14th place. Next is the part of the list that is featuring those titles that received nine votes each, thus making them tied for 10th place. The first being spy number 821. This is Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the bomb. And as you can see, the font is very much in keeping with the, uh, the, the credits of the film and the spirit of the film, as well as this shot being in keeping with the spirit of the film and what's, what it's about. And so this is very much uh, consistent with the overall spirit. It has a sense of zaniness and threat at the same time, and I think that is a great way to encapsulate this particular film. The credits, which are provided for in this lovely uh, Holy Bible and Russian Phrases booklet, eh, the credits for the art are indicated as being art directors, Sarah Habibi, Eric Skillman, designer, Eric Skillman, etc. And so we have so many components of this particular release that are just wonderful, of course. Uh, and so this is the release of Dr. Strangelove, or How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Bomb. Next, this also received nine votes, thus making it tied for 10th place. Spy number 579. This is the Phantom carriage and this is a really simple yet effective and very moody uh, cover art design choice which is I think very apt for purposes of this film if you know this film and so we have once again another simple yet effective choice to represent this film and what a great one it is phantom carriage art Directors Sarah Habibi, Eric Skillman, designer Christopher King, and very uh, moody, uh, uh, almost uh, uh, kind of um, uh, atmospheric, almost, uh, and very on point. This is The Phantom Carriage. Next, also having received nine votes, this is tied for 10th place. This is spine number two. This is Seven Samurai. And 
This is, of course, a representation of a particular image from the film, kind of a banner or symbol that is used in, in a very symbolic way in the film. Very effective, very simple, uh, almost minimal, and uh, at the same time very evocative, especially the use of this uh, almost brushed on font. Uh, again, very, very effective. This is uh, credited as being art directors Neil Kellerhouse, Eric Skillman, Sarah Habibi, with menu and package design Neil Kellerhouse. So, what a wonderful cover art design very much uh, iconic and emblematic of this uh, powerhouse of a film. This is Seven Samurai. Last but not least, tied for 10th place, having received nine votes. This is spine number 248. This is the cover art for the film Videodrome. And this package is quite fascinating in terms of how it looks and evokes a kind of videotape design, uh, which is housed in this uh, um, digipack cover art for the Blu-ray. And we have an image which is from the film. It's one of the most shocking and uh, most famous uh, one of the most famous uh, moments of the film, or indeed of any Cronenberg work. Uh, and so to have it here captured uh, in this cover art, together with this uh, theme of videotape and uh, that sort of thing, uh, is very apropos. So this is the cover art for Videodrome, which is uh, credited as being art director Sarah Habibi, menu and package design, Eva Wall. So once again, very powerful use of imagery and the theme of the video art for this film, which is Videodrome. Next is the group of films that each received 10 votes, thus making them tied for eighth place. And the first is spine number 336. This is Dazed and Confused. And this is such a knockout uh, in terms of the cover art design in this Blu-ray digipack, uh, which is presented here like so. Uh, the overall package is a marvel and a treat. It has this uh, evocative, sense of a homemade quality uh, in terms of the the, the, the motif of the uh, sort of hand drawing art on the one hand and yet at the same time it is very much a tapestry a tableau that covers many points which is also very much in keeping with the spirit of the tableau that is being presented by this uh, this film dazed and confused the use of color is dynamic it is fresh it is vibrant and thus it is tied for eighth place art is credited as being art director sarah habibi designer mark english design austin so once again my friends this is dazed and confused next this is a title that also received 10 votes, thus making it tied for 8th place. Spy number 555. Sweet smell of success. And you look at this and you think, this is a sort of noirish film set in very graphic art design color. And it is a taut film, of course, with a kind of, of, uh, of sort of mesmerizing quality and also a, a, a heightened drama quality. And I think all of that is captured here in this uh, wonderful graphic art, almost pop art or pastiche form uh, that is so well rendered and so uh, beautifully uh, designed. So this is Sweet Smell of Success. This has art directors Sarah Habibi, 
Eric Skillman, illustrations, Sean Phillip, Phillips, excuse me, menu and package design, Eric Skillman. So this is Sweet Smell of Success. Next is the one and only title that received 11 votes, thus making it the only title that stands in seventh place. This is spy number 13. The title is The Silence of the Lambs. And you look at this and you see a very uh, s mysterious image, but if you look closely, you realize that it is a an image that is consistent with the film. It is a very creepy image, which is also consistent with the film, and it also has a, a sort of taut simplicity, which is also in keeping with the eeriness and creepiness of the film, and thus this is very fitting uh, art design for the film The Silence of the Lambs. And we have production credits here. Art, directors, Sarah Habibi, Eric Skillman, illustrations, there is studio, designer, Eric Skillman. Once again, for seventh place, The Silence of the Lambs. Next are the titles that received 12 votes each thus making them tied for fifth place. So the first is spy number 1000. This is Godzilla, the Showa era films 1954 to 1975. And I received votes for this entire set now, as you know, or as you may know, the set has illustrations that are provided by a number of artists, not just one, but a number of artists uh, that are providing artwork for each of the films that are featured in this particular set. Now, I should be clear, the votes that I received for purposes of this entry for fifth place were for the set itself. So I can interpret this to mean an overall, uh, uh, you know, the overall artwork itself, which includes all of the artists that uh, made artwork for each of the titles. And also uh, credit is due for the cover art design and the main interior credited to Yuko Shimizu. Uh, so there is that. Let me just add also that Art directors are Sarah Habibi, Eric Skillman, and designer Eric Skillman, with illustrators being credited for each of the films included in this set. So once again, I received the votes for the entirety of the set, which is uh, so cool and very colorful and vivid, and it certainly catches one's attention, does it not? So this is fifth place, having received 12 votes. This is Godzilla, the Showa era films, 1954 to 1975. Last but not least, for fifth place, having received 12 votes, this is spy number 909. The film is Night of the Living Dead. And this is such a cool rendering of this film, borrowing the motif that is seen in the font, which is also borrowed from the, uh, the marketing materials and used to great effect here with the black and white illustrations and the zombie art, etc. It is very chilling, very effective, which continues through the interior of this uh, Blu-ray Digipack. The production credits, art, art directors, Sarah Habibi, Eric Skillman, and illustrator Sean Phillips with designer Eric Skillman. Once again, this is powerful. This is uh, very much in keeping with the film. It is uh, uh, just a beautiful uh, rendition 
of the tone of this film. It's dark, it's creepy, it's a horror film, and also has in many elements some aspects of comic book and that kind of thing. So all of this is encompassed, is encompassed in this wonderfully presented package, Night of the Living Dead. Next, this is the section of the list that is third place. So there were two films tied for third place, each receiving 15 votes. The first being Spy Number 804. And I'm very happy about this one. A Brighter Summer Day. This is, I've mentioned it before, and I'll say it again, this is my favorite film in the Criterion Collection. And this is a powerful, powerful work with cover art that is so evocative and uh, befitting, this powerful work of art. And I should just mention right now, the art directors are Sarah Habibi and Eric Skillman with designer Eric Skillman and cover photo Edward Yang. The director is credited as being the one uh, for the cover photo. So this cover art therefore takes on an extra added dimension of meaning when we realize that the director himself had a hand in this uh, this photo that is now being used as the image for this release from the Criterion Collection. And that makes this cover art design choice all the more powerful. So this is a brighter summer day. Next, this is also tied for third place, having received 15 votes. This is spine number 654. Repo Man, wow. Simply put, wow. This is kinetic, energetic. It is filled with so much life and intensity and shock and awe. And gosh, it just keeps going and going. You open it up and it just keeps going and going. You go through the book and it just keeps going and going. The green, the the uh, 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 the graffiti art motif and the the, the punk art this uh, this liveliness this uh, this uh, just uh, uh, just almost a shock and awe type of attitude that seems to be ingrained in this art it's so perfect for this film and so this is a great choice for. Uh, third place uh, and the booklet as well you know I just want to say that it just continues on through the booklet that the, the uh, uh, illustrations are just um, magnificent uh, just it's just you can spend hours just enjoying this so uh, the cover art and the art in the booklet uh, really just a fantastic presentation from Criterion art director Sarah Habibi Cover illustration, Jay Shaw. Folder illustration, Tyler Stout. Book and menu design, Rob Jones. Book illustrations, Rob Jones, Jay Shaw, etc. So, once again, tied for third place. This is the brilliant release of Repo Man. Next is the one and only title that is in second place. This received 18 votes. And this is spy number 432. Um, I'm not going to show it yet, but maybe you can tell from the reflection of light that seems to be hitting my face that this is a cover art that has a shiny surface. Now, what could it be? It is Mishima, A Life in Four Chapters, spine number 432. This also 
is one that uh, puts a big smile on my face because I am a huge admirer of this film and I love what Criterion has done here. Now, I'm, I'm purposefully shifting this back and forth just to give you a sense of the shininess of this. This is a gold, pink, blue, fluorescent uh, motif that is uh, in a in a, a, a positive way, very uh, startling, almost uh, sort of grotesque, and I mean that in a positive way. It is meant to shock, it is meant to disturb, it is meant to not necessarily go together. You know, these colors don't, um, don't they don't seem to uh, complement each other, but they clash, and I think that is the point, and that is very much in keeping with the sense of clashing tones that were within the the character and personage and the 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 man that was Yukio Mishima, at least as depicted in this film, and so this to me is such a perfect perfect encapsulation it is so consistent it is in keeping with the atmosphere and spirit of this film Mishima a life in four chapters that itself has so many tones that are clashing all at once to create a, a sense of brilliance of design and art and conception so this is uh, the cover art which is credited as being uh, let's see here, excuse me this is credited as art directors Sarah Habibi Neil Kellerhouse with menu and package design Neil Kellerhouse etc I love the pink I love the gold and I love everything in between I think it is perfect and it is uh, just uh, one of those one of those special designs that just gets it just right and if you know the film you know what I mean uh, it's just right uh, this is Mishima a life in four chapters number two and now we arrive at the title that received the most votes 27 votes. This is by far the, this is the title that received the most votes. Second place having received 18 votes. First place, 27 votes. So this is the clear number one choice of you, the viewers. And this is a fantastic, fantastic choice. This is spy number 539. The title is Haosu. Haosu is your number one choice for your favorite Criterion Collection cover art design. My friends, bravo. This is a fine choice you have made. The clear winner. This has, uh, this is just one of those iconic things. This image, I would dare say, has become almost. Uh, uh, so in interconnected with Criterion collection and Criterion branding. Uh, it is, of course, a, a very significant symbol of the film itself, and it has this uh, scary, horrifying look to it that is also uh, absurd and almost comic and comedic at the same time, and it's that mixture of horror and absurdity uh, with the use of the uh, the overly... Uh, not overly, but the, the hyper-designed uh, titles and lettering and the largesse of this and the use of the color and the, its simplicity and its, uh, its horrifying effect and its also comedic effect and its absurdity. All of this is so on point with this horrifying, absurd, comedic film. It is perfect. And I would dare say that this image also has become, uh, in a sense anyway, an image that is, uh, in, uh, that is used a lot in Criterion's branding. I think this is uh, sometimes offered in t-shirt sales from the Criterion collection or other sorts of, of uh, use of this, uh, this image on products, etc. So this itself has become, uh, in many ways, synonymous with criterion branding and also branding of this kind of of art house film 
This is from Japan, of course, and it is a unique, one-of-a-kind viewing experience. And so to have this iconic image somehow transposed onto uh, this kind of branding also serves to to uh, to show just how powerful this is and how this image seems to act almost also alternatively at the same time simultaneously as an image that is branding the sense of art house cinema itself perfect perfect stuff and uh, just continuing on with the sort of uh, the, the uh, unique absurdist uh, uh, highly stylized use of color design continuing on through the back of course but it is this uh, iconic iconic uh, cover art design that was your overwhelming choice as the number one favorite Criterion Collection cover art design and once again well done my friends this is a splendid choice I should say that art director is credited as Sarah Habibi with menu and package design Sam Smith this is great and when I saw this choice I was just so thrilled I was over the moon you did very very well as you always do my friends as you always do okay so that is the list that's the list for top 20 favorite criterion collection cover art designs what do you think uh, are you okay with this list? Do you think it's uh, it's okay, or, or do you have any other thoughts or comments? Uh, if so, please feel free to let me know in the comments section below. As always, I would love to hear what it is you have to say. And please note that going forward, I will be making more videos where I will be presenting the rest of the list uh, that uh, uh, that you all voted for and so hopefully uh, uh, if you have the time and opportunity I would love for uh, you to check that out if you can that would be so great uh, but for now my friends thank you very much and until we meet again please be happy and healthy and well and please keep on watching a lot of great great movies once again my sincerest thanks to you all be well, warmest, warmest regards, and cheers. Mm -hmm.